we have Jason uh, Buttrill who has come in to uh, brief us on you know the little F sixteen F eighteen jets going on over to Syria and uh, bombing the snot out of them uh, last night. And these are Iranian backed militia groups, correct? That's correct. Did they? Did our government actually say that that was unrelated? Yeah. Everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, this is why I hate the media. They're going to allow that to get passed. That is absolutely insane. Yeah, but the, nobody <laughs> believes that. Who believes that? Well, they're not talking about it in the grand scope of what's about to happen. Israel is about to become the center of the world, and they're not talking about it that way. What do you mean they're about to become the center of the world? Oh, Glenn, this is this is going to be in. I don't want to use the word insane again, but it's going to be insane. This is all a part of a plan. So right now, I think since the last 10 days, we've been hit 19 times yes. by these Iranian-backed forces. Correct. We have had zero response mm -hmm. since these F-16s, F whatever, mm -hmm. actually went and, uh, and retaliated. 16s and 18s. Nuts. I mean, we there was no response. And what this was, is this is a warning. So there's this is all a plan. Now I, I haven't I didn't sit in, in with the cabal you know the this axis of evil that's that's you know <laughs> gone together that we know of that we know of <laughs> yeah. I was not sitting there listening to the plan but this is a plan there's no way Gaza does that attack without Iran's approval without Correct. their sign off Correct. There, there's no way Correct but the problem is hot for Hamas they're not set up to engage in a war of attrition with Israel they're not so then you got to ask, what is the plan then? Well, the plan is for them to sustain this attack. They've been firing nonstop rockets. Again, how, where, where did they get all these rockets? They, they came from Iran. They came from Hezbollah. And they can only do this for a certain amount of time. Well, what they're doing is waiting for the ground invasion from the IDF into Gaza to happen. That is going to happen. So what then happens? Well, then Hezbollah gets involved. Then IRGC from Syria, which we just struck, then they get involved. All of these fronts converge. That's been their plan since the beginning. Multi-front war on Israel. It can't just happen from Gaza. So everyone knows this. They're not telling us this is happening. But all these pot shots from Iran, Houthis from Yemen, again, Iranian, yes, yes. all of these have been warning uh, warning shots, in, in a sense, at us to say, this is us, this is us doing our thing. Do not get involved. Because if we do get involved, and I'm, this is, that's what we're waiting on right now. We're waiting on, the reason the ground invasion has not happened yet is because they are waiting on American assets to get in theater. Just say it that way. Our government media, just say it that way. We are waiting on American assets to start engaging in this war. That's what we're doing. We have already sent two aircraft carriers. We it's not going to be enough. I, I expect another one. I expect another one. Because when Iranians... When's the last time we had three aircraft carriers in that region? Gulf War. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, so we have... We've, we've already put thousands of American troops, sailors, and airmen uh, into the Gulf region because of this. The president sent over another 900 troops yesterday just to go into Syria and to back our forces in Syria, which we are just watching the oil fields, right? Isn't that what we're doing? Saying we're doing? The, um, yeah, the, the, there is maybe one or two that we have bases near. Uh, basically, they're trying to just keep that away from the Assad right. forces and all that. Right. Um, there's an air base uh, at Deir Zora, I believe, that U.S. forces are at. I think that was the one of the ones that got hit recently by these Iranian forces. So what is, because we said to the United Nations, if they don't stop, we will act decisively and immediately. And, um, you know, that's prompted the response from Iran about the Islamic fire and the fury that they're going to unleash on us. Um, and then we did it. So where does this go from here? I mean, those were that threat is empty words based off of the Biden administration's response so far. This one little attack on whatever they hit is is so minor. They need to be going directly at these uh, Iranian-backed militias, and those spread all the way through into Iraq. So American forces were in Iraq, were in Kurdistan, uh, northern Iraq, uh, were in Syria. All of these air assets they're they're trying to get to protect U.S. forces that we have strung out all over the place because those are now targets. So ground invasion. Uh, Hezbollah, uh, IRGC get involved, and then Iran directly, uh, God forbid, on some of these American sites because they know that for them, this is, this is war. 
for us, this is, oh, we don't know what to do. We're going to let it. No, we're all going to be drawn into this. And it just depends on how far this is going to progress. Um, I would I would think the big shot that Iran would do would be to start shutting down the Straits, uh, Strait of Hormuz, Bab el Memdeb, and the further in the that Red Sea. That happens, and it is war. It's it, global war. You shut those Straits down. That's global war. Big time. Yeah. But but that is the direction we're headed. And I, I you know, you got to wonder why now. I, you know, I, I, I. Well, let me ask you this because you just say why now. As you were talking, I was just thinking. You know, it's interesting. The Biden administration is weak, absolutely weak, pathetic, pathetic. And it's it's the the citizens are in disarray and not necessarily all behind the president. There's a bunch of people that are and a bunch of people that aren't. Same with same with um, Bibi Netanyahu. The citizenry is is split Mm -hmm. on his administration. Same thing in Iran. Same thing in Russia. Same thing in Ukraine. All of these, Syria, all of these countries that are engaged in this, they have weak governments right now. Is that mm, a coincidence? Um, I no. I, I think that's definitely part of it. I, I think. Uh, Does it feel like we're taking the brunt of trouble to hold these administrations up? Yeah, for sure. And then I, I think that our weak government um, doing whatever their interests are in Ukraine, getting bogged down in Ukraine, has definitely paid, played a big part of this as well. Because we are probably about 12 months behind on ordering ammunition to replenish our own stockpiles because of the Ukrainian war. Um, that is a big part of it. The, the, the Biden administration needs to today declare the Ukraine war, Ukraine-Russia war over. They need to do that. And 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 for all intents and pur- purposes, Glenn, it is. It, it, it is over. It is a stagnant conflict. It, the, 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 the battle lines, the front lines have been set. They're not going to make any more major advances for, on either side. Those are set, but we're still continuing to fund and arm that forever war. And right now, that it is a forever war. They need to declare it over. They it's, won't. It's done. We are, we are now bowing out of that because there's nothing to be gained. Yesterday, beyond. Hamas was in Moscow. Yeah. Meeting with, you know, high authorities in Moscow. Yeah. Uh, Moscow has made uh, all kinds of alliances with Iran. Yeah. So we have our axis of evil. Yeah. And if Iran engages us and Israel, then our eye is off the ball. They will think in Ukraine and it will be. It should be. We're not. What are we doing? Mm hmm. And they will use that as a way to go into, I think, Ukraine, bog us down in a two-front war. And I don't think it's very long before China then goes in and goes into Taiwan. Because there's no way we could fight a three-front war. Yeah. And that's what they want to expose. They, we, they were, the, the days of a, a lone global superpower are over. And how they always use the word multipolar war. They're forcing the multipolar war you know, uh, how that looks onto us pretty much right now in real time. I don't think that Russia can't really do anything uh, to support Hamas at the moment uh, or even really Iran. They have their own problems. They have their own munition problems and money problems. But this is definitely a time for choosing. And it's showing Mm. the world what it's going to look like in the very near future. Sides are getting split. Countries are choosing who they want to align with. And as how you can it, how can Germany, France, England choose Israel? How could they possibly do that? They are over. Look at what's happening in our country. They are overrun yeah. by Islamists. Uh, how are they going to possibly do that? Because they'll have a fight inside of their own country as well as in foreign lands. And talk about weak governments. They are the poster ch- children of weak governments. They have people in power that are sympathizers. You know, they're, they're, they're all on the woke side. They're all on, so many of them probably privately support Hamas, and they don't even really understand why, because they've been told they're supposed to. Uh, I mean, it's, we are infested with this kind of leadership all over the free world. You know me. You've known me for a long time. You know I have tripwires. Mm-hmm. And the significant tripwire that is um, 
the, the last real significant chip, uh, tripwire that I have to do things that, um, that I think protect my family and everything else. Uh, the last one is global war. And I think when global war actually really hits and we're all like, holy cow, where you are is where you will be. Mm-hmm. How close are we to that tripwire? I don't, the, the countries that are involved right now are not ready for global war. Um, Russia is not ready for global war. China's not even ready to go after Taiwan. They're just not. They're, they're years away from even attempting that. Um, Iran is not capable of even regional war, I don't think. They're, they're capable of these little pot shot attacks, and they, they've, they've gathered up these militias to cause chaos. But I feel that we're in the chaos stage. We're in the chaos stage to see how far out we can get split up, how many conflicts we can get involved in. And there, those big three, China, Russia, Iran, are going to be major players in that. But I think that's the stage we're in right now. And the Holy Land was one of the, I guess, launching points for them to start this. Um, Ukraine, Israel, Taiwan in the future. So what are the things, well, hang on. Let me give you a second to think about this. What are the things that you would have to see before you start to go, okay, hang on, wait, we are headed for real problems. Give that answer to me here in 60 seconds. So, Jason, what are the things that have to happen before... I mean, the thing that happened in um, Israel happened overnight. Nobody saw it coming. Happened overnight. The world changed. I think we are in a moment of choosing right now. I feel that so strongly that everybody has to decide which side they're on right now because it's going to get very, very hard. And you also have to, you have to say, I'm going to be a survivor on the side of life or I'm going to just try to hide on the side of death or fight for the side of death. Um, what are the things that you see would be real tip-offs that something big is coming? Well, a lot of the conflict has been driven lately over proxy forces, and we've been doing that little dance, that waltz, for the past decade plus. And I think when nation states start getting directly involved, that's when it, when it heats up. So proxy forces were blamed for, you know, back in 2014 in Ukraine. Everyone knew Russia was directly involved. Um, and so were we. Um, and so are we. But, um, but proxy forces were, were used then. Mm-hmm. Well, it elevated when Russia officially invaded Ukraine, and then it bumped up. Iran is using proxy forces right now. But that is going to change once the nation of Iran gets involved directly. That will happen, I think, when they try to shut down uh, the oil flow. Um, so I will get you know, a little bit more, I guess, nervous once that happens. When China starts uh, making moves directly you know, against uh, t- uh, Taiwan, instead of using asymmetrical warfare and things like that, then I'll get more. I think Taiwan more. is more of, I hate to say it, but collateral damage. I think Taiwan happens when the rest of the world is concentrating over in the Middle East, I, no, I agree. I, I think that will be one of the final dominoes to fall. Yeah. But but I'm I'm but the things to start looking at is look at the nations that are that are starting to that make their choice in this time of choosing. Look what Turkey just said. Turkey just uh, came out in support of Hamas and said Hamas are just freedom fighters. Mm-hmm. That's a NATO country. Maybe not for long. If they are, if they continue to stay in, then the next president needs to think about finally taking us out of NATO. Um, they they just need to do it. I don't even know the reason NATO even still exists. Um, c- countries like Qatar. Qatar is, along with Turkey, the largest state backer of the Muslim Brotherhood, aka Hamas. Mm-hmm. We have a military base in Qatar. Now, it's only a matter of time before Qatar also makes their choice in this time of choosing. You're going to start to see the separation happen. And it, it could happen rapidly. It could play out over a decade. I- I'm not sure. But these are the things to watch when you're looking at, okay, this is starting to get untenable. Big change is about to happen. How bad is the loss of that base in Qatar for us? Um, I mean, it's a major base. Um, is it a naval? It's a it's an air base. base. 
It's an airbase. Which is the one right across from Iraq and Iran? Is that in the UAE? There's like a naval base there, isn't there? Uh, it, maybe that's the, maybe that is the one in Qatar. I'm yeah, not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, all right. Anything? Any other good news you have to share with us? <laughs> <laughs> there is a God, and He is good. Yeah. Then. 